As the warrior of light, you have fought the primals. But have you ever wished you could summon smaller and angrier versions of them to do your bidding? Well, as a summoner, you can. This is the sister job of the scholar, as in both come from the arcanist, and any experience you get in either summoner or the scholar, you will also get in the other job, giving you a nice little combo of a healer and a DPS to switch between. We have already checked out the excellent story of the scholar, so now it's time to check out the summoner. We start our story in Limsalominsa. We became a strong arcanist, mastering our teamwork with our carbuncle and hurting all our foes with the book. But one day, meet with Thupergeim, our guildmaster. He tells us about an intriguing request the guild has received. It comes from the Sons of St. Koinak, which is an organization of some of the finest minds of Eorzea. They are Sherlean in origin and seek the lost knowledge of the ancient Elegant Empire. They have asked for us by name, because they need the assistant of an arcanist who has also defeated a primal, if it to be exact. And as we have done so, we are the only candidate. Though Thupergeim is unsure how they even know we killed a primal at all, still see their access to Gridania to meet with one of their members. This turns out to be Ymitra, one of Histola's half-sisters, which gives us a good idea how she found out about the whole Ifrit business. He probably spoke to Histola about the research he was doing, and our fellow Cyan helpfully pointed out that we would be an excellent candidate. Ymitra tells us recently her group found an ancient text describing the existence of elegant mages known as summoners. These mages were able to siphon the essence of a primal and manifest it into a summonable ally known as an Eggy. To do that, the summoner must possess some of the primal's essence, and for that they must have siphoned it, or in our case, defeated the primal. So she asks us to please assist with the research and meet us west of Byrgot Strike in southern Thanalan to attempt the summoning of Ifrit. Very curious by her research, we happily agree and head out to the desert. There, Emitra explains that we must perform a ritual to bind the Aki to us. Part of this is doing the summoning in a land matching the Aki's dominant element, which is why we're in the desert. What we must do now is focus on the ether within us, visualize it flowing through us and transforming into a living flame. And if we manage to do it just right, the heat of our life force will spawn the Ifrit Aki. But it will also be hostile, so we must also use some violence to beat it into submission and claim our status as the master. We do just that and manage to summon what I can only describe as the Chihuahua version of an Ifrit. All the anger just in a smaller package. We do defeat this tiny Ifrit, giving us the ability to summon it at our leisure. As we return to Gridania with Ymitra, we are thrilled about the progress. We have managed to resurrect what was till now a long-lost magic lost form. We are the first summoner since the Great Elegant Empire. And eager to continue, we decide next to try to capture the Aggie of Titan. As we have taken down that particular primal, there is a good chance we can summon his Aggie as well and gain control of it. For this, we decide to head out with the Mitra to a place heavy with the earthen aspect. This is a place in the north south southwest of Alden Spring. During the calamity, part of the ancient rock layers below the land were exposed making this place heavy in the etherical aspect of Earth, and a perfect place to summon an angry rock giant in miniature. We head to the location with Ymitra and perform the ritual. We summon the Titan Agi, fight him to become his master, and as we celebrate with Ymitra, we are suddenly attacked by a higher claiming to be looking for elegant relics. This turns out to be a summoner, one that's quite full of himself, claiming we are undeserving of the power we have earned. We are quite stunned to realize there is actually another summoner out here. He gives us so much opportunities to study this art together. Sadly, this one claims that we hold a treasure that he wants and he has decided to take it through murder. Realizing we won't get any interesting academic discussion with this guy, we fight him instead, and he also summon up an Ifredegi. Still, we are strong, and he falls but pulls from within, making the Ifrit Aki blast us with deadly fire, 
only for our titan Aki to dash up and protect us. The stranger is done by this before he leaves, for now at least. We return to Gridania wondering what he meant by treasure we possess. Dimitra wants to find out who the summoner was, so we head out to train while she speaks to some of her colleagues. And sometime later she meets with us again, telling us she has some good news. She has figured out who this mysterious summoner is. He is a higher named Tristan. He was a former soldier of the Immortal Flames and did indeed take part in defeating Ifrit. Meaning he also had everything required to be able to summon it up, though how he learned to do so we are unsure. We are also quite unsure why he is so very keen on murdering us. Dimitra reminds us that this power of summoning isn't meant to be used for control or tyranny, but to oppose it. So we must bring Tristan to justice, else he might actually ruin this newly rediscovered field of magic. If he starts harming people all over the place, using summoning magic is going to be quickly outlawed and even becoming a taboo. So if we want to become a summoner, we have to stop him from messing it up. Dimitra tells us he found out a one of Tristan's old comrades actually lives in Little Alamigo. So we're to head there to see if he has any information about Tristan's whereabouts so we can sit him down for a good talk. We meet him and only find out that Tristan got home first. Apparently he told the man we are tempered, causing this former soldier to lay an ambush for us instead, before running off to warn Tristan. Now, it's easy to understand his fears. When a being becomes tempered, their soul belongs to the primal that tempered them. Their very life changing to have a singular goal to summon and sustain that primal, through the gathering of crystal and bringing others to the primal, to make them his victim as well. There is no cure for this condition, and the only solution is to kill the tempered person, to prevent them from harming others. So, we do understand why the former soldier turned hostile, as he has most likely faced a primal before, and lost some friends to this exact thing. So we return to Yumitra reporting what happened, and settling down to make a new plan. After some time thinking, Yumitra tells us, that the best thing for us to do right now is actually to do nothing. We don't know where Tristan is, but apparently we do have something he wants, meaning he will eventually come to us, so we need to prepare for that by getting stronger. One thing that could help us is a set of evokers attire with the sons of St. Koinach that found lately during the research in Mordona. Not all parts of the outfit, but enough to be possibly a notable help as this garment was made during the Alecan Empire and exclusively for the use of summoners. Perhaps, if we were to wear the outfit, it would strengthen us making us better prepared to deal with Tristan when he arrives. Together with Himitra, we head to Mordona, where the group is doing the research. We speak to their leader, Rambrose, who tells us the researcher will be hard-pressed to give up their finds, but perhaps if we were to perform a service for them, they might. You see, these elegant constructs known as Mironites have been disrupting the research. They came back to life for some reason and are very hostile. If these things were disposed of so the researcher could actually work in peace, they might happily hand over the garment pieces. And in fact, if all the Mironites are dealt with, Ambrose would give us the piece he found. As we are experts in solving things with violence, we just get straight to work each mirror knight falling to our summoner might, and each researcher handing over a piece of the outfit. After each of the fiendish lane, we head back to Ambrose, who hands over the last piece of the outfit, giving us the entire outfit except the chest piece. But it's okay, because this is an outfit. The ancient elegant summoner were very brave when picking the red pieces. So it might work as an excellent surprise weapon if I ever just charged against somebody. With the outfit sorted, Yumitra decides it would do as well to also get another Aggie. This time, the Aggie of Garuda. Like before, we need to find a place filled with the matching ether. In Garuda's case, we need wind. Thankfully, Yumitra already has a place in mind. The remains of the floating city of Nim up in Autelanoska. While the city is in ruins, the aspect of wind is still very strong around there. We make our way there once again, performing the ritual to summon the Aggie, 
It turns out Garuta kind of looks like a dragon in her eggy form. I was kind of expecting more feathers, but oh well. After gaining dominance over her, we take some time to rest, only for Yumitra to bring us horrible news. Some of her colleagues at St. Koinax Find have been murdered. The reports about the incident all talk about a black-robed attacker, and Yumitra is convinced the killer is no other than Tristan. So we head to the research side and try to figure out what he was after, why he picked those particular researchers. Speaking of one of the survivors, we learn they had been celebrating a recent find at the time. They had found the soul crystal of an elegant summoner. Then Tristan showed up, demanding they hand the gem over, and when they refused, he attacked them, taking the gem by force. Dimitra decides this is the time to share her theory with us. She believes the treasure he is speaking about that we are holding is actually our soul crystal, and when he found soul crystals easier to obtain, he just went and grabbed those. But why he wants these crystals and how he plans to use them, we aren't quite sure about. So, we decide to find him and ask. And we do find Tristan at the singing yard, where we see him speaking to an Asian of all things. We observe as Tristan hands over three summoner soul stones to the Asian, and we watch as he pulls the knowledge from them putting them into Tristan before vanishing as Tristan notices us. Now the process of taking in the knowledge and experience of those who once held those soul crystal looked agonizing. Yeah, Tristan is already ready to fight, demanding our crystal now, and he's planning to take it with force like he did with the researchers. He tells us he will become all-powerful, and by doing that he will wipe out all the beast tribes, so no more primals can ever be summoned. But first, he will kill us. Tristan is far stronger now. Using the ancient knowledge, he summons up what looks like a darker version of Ifridagi. The fight is fierce, but we have also gained much power, including adding Garuda to our team. And in the end, we beat him. Urn power tends to be far stronger than a stolen one, it seems. With Tristan defeated, Ymitra seems to have puzzled together his story. She speaks to him and we learn why he would do all this, why he would join the Asians of all things. When he was part of the Imperial Flames, he served with his brother, and they were together when they went to face Ifrit. But his brother ended up getting tempered, so Kristen killed him, as there is no cure. And at that moment, he realized he didn't care how far he had to go, how many he had to hurt, if it would give him the power to stop the primal threat permanently. Can't help but pity him, as we watch him stumble up trying to summon his Ifrit Eggy again. But something goes wrong. There is a blinding light, and Tristan is gone. Either run away or consumed by his power. We stand behind with Ymitra confused and saddened, because as science, our goal is also to stop the primal threat. If he had just found us instead of the Asians, perhaps Tristan's story could have been so much different. So with heavy heart we make our way back to Gridania. We know that even if Tristan is gone, the Asian plot still stands. They don't care about the lives of mortals. They will find another puppet, another broken soul to do their bidding. But right now, there is little we can do but train. One day, the fiend will reveal itself, and then we will deal with it. Dimitra gives us the final piece of our outfit now. It was found at the same dick side as the soul crystal Tristan stole. It is a gift from the researcher for bringing the murderous summoner to justice, though at the moment it does not really feel much like justice at all. Still, we don the outfit, knowing we've got a long way to go in our summoning art. But for now, we must end this chapter, the summoner. A role which has a very interesting story that I feel works very well with the overarching tale of our game. Making the Arcanist open up two jobs with excellent stories, which I think is really neat. But thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like more content like this, go check out my channel. Also, if you want to be a dear, do all the good YouTube stuff, subscribe, comment, like, all that, it makes the algorithm happy, which makes me very happy. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day.